You eat those in a funny way. <laughs> you should see how I eat them. All right. Um, we are in um, Genesis 16. <clears throat> and we're going to just go back a few verses so that we can catch up what's going on. Um, so let's go to uh, verse 7, start at verse 7. And the angel of the Lord found her, and the her here is uh, Hagar, <clears throat> by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And um, we have discussed that she ran because of, um, because of oppression, because of, and you know, oppression can happen in a lot of different ways, but um, <clears throat> She ran because it was just really hard living there in that situation with Sarah. And <clears throat> again, remember that uh, really Hagar was the one who kind of started it. But Hagar is not the one who's supposed to be the seed bearer, the one who's going to bring forth the seed. See, God looks at things a little differently there. And... Um, and then Sarah reacts by being very oppressive. Uh, I think probably <clears throat> Hagar, there was some mocking or whatever that caused jealousy. But um, with Sarah, there arose this spirit uh, that she was oppressing her. And we looked at a lot of different examples of that in the scriptures um, where the same word was used. Um, Israel and Egypt, and they were being oppressed by the Egyptians <clears throat> with hard bondage. And um, so she ran. And um, this says the angel of the Lord, but before we get done, it's, we're going to find out it's the Lord. <clears throat> um, and we also notice that she... She only said that she f is fleeing from Sarah's face. She didn't say, she didn't bring up all the stuff that Sarah had done to cause it. She just said, you know, and, and it, it could have made her look in a bad light, like, well, you're just trying to get out of, out of stuff um, if you don't give a further explanation. You know, sometimes the devil or our flesh wants to give a further explanation so we can look better. But God knows. <laughs> God knows. <clears throat> so, um, um, and then we, we also sort of were a little amazed, at least I was. <laughs> but if we're all on this journey together, we were amazed too. <laughs> that God's showing up out there with Hagar almost, sure is almost in Egypt, <clears throat> and uh, leaves the camp of Sarah and of Abram. And the interchanges <clears throat> that happened uh, in this uh, setting here between God and Hagar. And I, again, I've mentioned those. I think probably I'll get into it a little later um, more because, as we go on in the scriptures, we're going to see that there's some, you know, there's some real things that are going on between Hagar and God. All right, so, verse 9, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her, uh, it says, hands. But in reality, he knows that it is her oppressive hands. Amen? All right. So did Hagar. She knew that's what that meant. Um, okay, that's a hard thing to ask. 
uh, it, it's, doesn't it seem a little funny that he would say, go do that, but she's not going to bring forth the promised seed? It's so like, well, that, well, why? Ah, why? <laughs> yes. Good question you ask. Thank you. Thank you all for asking that one. Why would he ask her to go back? Not just go back, but submit herself to Sarah's oppression. Well, we've discussed somewhat of that. We've discussed the implications of that. The, some of the implications are that if she goes back <clears throat> and does this thing because God asked her to, then that would be grounds for God to move on a certain front. Some of you may, may, may or may not, but see, we haven't really got to that yet, so we'll, we'll explain it more as we go. <clears throat> Um, so I did read this last time uh, the reply from God's messenger could make it sound as if God was on Sarah's side he tells Hagar to return and to bear the suffering that Sarah dishes out suffer by her hand and as uh, mentioned it's the same word as in verse 6 deal harshly she, she dealt harshly with Hagar Sarah dealt harshly or oppressively. All right, <clears throat> so let's see if we can move on a little more now. Of course, it has been a long time since we've had this class, so. Um, so let's go to verse 10. So apparently the, the angel of the Lord detected that she's going to do this. And now he's going to respond. Now He's going to respond. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Okay. Okay. Is there anything going on in the Middle East right now? <clears throat> hmm? Is there anything going on in the Middle East all the time? Basically. <clears throat> so why is God, is God not thinking? Why is he going to multiply, if you will, the enemy? Okay. Well, first of all, he's not multiplying the enemy. He's not multiplying Ishmael. This is a situation between God and Hagar. And because of what she's about to do and the spirit in which she's about to do it, God's doing this for her. You say, well, the, but the implications, it's beyond implications, but the implications of what that's going to do to Isaac when he comes. <clears throat> but really? I mean, really, do we think that way? Do we not think that all things can work together for good to those who love God or be called according to his purpose to be conformed into the image of his son? And so we, you know, it's the old Christian thing. It's the old Christian thing. Um, God will take care of us. God will not let anything bad happen to us. God will, you know. I mean, I remember, I, I kind of reacted. Anybody know David Wilkerson? You know the name? David Wilkerson was, you know, a man really used of God in many fronts in many ways. And... Um, uh, he had been ministering to the gangs in New York City, and then he moved to Texas and had a ministry out with a whole lot of other ministries in East Texas. And then the Lord called him to go back to New York, and he went back there and built a, a, a church. Built, he didn't build the building, but built the church there. And very influential and everything. And um, some years ago, he and his wife came back down to probably visit friends, and they were driving along in those nice little East Texas 
roads because they really are nice. And there's some beautiful little towns out there. Quinlan, is that the name of that one that I like so much? <clears throat> yeah, Quitman. Quit, man. Anyway, uh, and so um, he has a car wreck and dies. And I remember my thought was, when it happened, why would he die like that? You know, I mean, why would the Lord let him die like that? And, um, you know, I I'm glad I verbalized things to the Lord, you know, because he talks back when you do. Lord, why would you do that? Why would you ask me why I would do that? <clears throat> And uh, I think I've, I've told a few people this. <clears throat> but, um, you know, there are still people out there who don't like me, who, who say things about me, who believe junk and spread it. And to this day, I mean, even, even, even during the gathering, something was going on. You know, it's like, <laughs> are you kidding me? But it occurred to me you know, I'm going to be 71 here in a month and a half, which is just a year away from 72. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Y'all need to get your faith up. <clears throat> anyway, I, um, I had a flash. What if the Lord had me get some sort of horrible disease? Just something horrible. I Like brain-eating maggots or something, you know, I don't know. Just something horrible. What if he did that? And it was kind of like he said that to me, and I'm going, well, that would not be good. <laughs> and, um, Especially you may not want that after that. <clears throat> anyway, and I said, why? And he, uh, it, you know, he didn't say he was going to do it. He just said, what if da da da? Why? And, you know, within myself. But, and then it occurred to me that the way Jesus died on the cross was as a criminal, as a deceiver, demon had demons, all this stuff, and that was the most beautiful death ever. And that. He would allow me to go into a death like that so that my enemies could say, See, I told you. He wouldn't have died like that unless he was some sort of a horrible, horrible thing. And I told the Lord I'd be honored to die that way with you, for you. I'd be honored. Regardless of how it supports, you know, negative people who have other ideas. I would, be, I would be honored to go into a death like that in two years. Anyway, um, so, um, so he, I didn't even finish that sentence. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. What does that sound like? Anybody? It sounds like the promise to Abraham. But he's given it to Sarah. I mean, to, to Hagar. And to Hagar's seed, they're going to multiply like this. Okay? So, um, there was a verse. Well, I'll probably get to it then. So I'll just read this. <clears throat> Uh, it would be something like this. Hagar, because of you suffering rightly in a right spirit, I will so greatly increase your seed. I wrote, it sounds eerily similar to the promises God made to Abram. God speaks these words to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, but to no one else except Hagar. I mean, come on. That's, that's kind of earth shattering, and it gets worse. 
It gets better. You know, it does. It gets better. So everyone else gets the promise secondhand except Hagar. You know, God called her by her name. Remember, that was a big deal. Up to this point, this is the first time anybody in the story has actually called her Hagar. Everything else has been the narrator saying, and Hagar did this and that and that. But now, God calls her by her name. God called her by her name and spoke it directly to her. Well, what would that be like? Well, it depends on what he's got to say. <laughs> I mean, if you're thinking, gosh, I'd like that to happen. You want God to speak directly to you, Chris? Sure. Even if he's mad? Come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, in Genesis, only three women heard directly from God's mouth. Eve, Sarah, and Hagar, and you're, you're right for that, see. In the first two cases, it was God basically rebuking them. Eve and Sarah. So you, so you laughed, anybody remember that in the story? <laughs> and Eve, you know, what, what have you done? You know, all that. Good. So, so the only one, the three women that he spoke to in Genesis, only one of them he wasn't rebuking, and it was Hagar. <laughs> yeah. See, there's something going on here, and we need to learn not to just read in the, today's headlines. Amen. Amen. You would really agree with that, you and Scott, wouldn't you? <clears throat> um, the angel continues to promise to multiply her seed greatly, so much so that they would be too many to be numbered. That's verse 9 and 10. Too many to be numbered. <laughs> okay. What's this all about? It's about... Number one, Sarah, what she did, okay? And, and again, I'm, I'm trying to remember if I haven't already read that scripture or will read it yet, but it says that's what's going on here. And, but the other thing is, see, people can, people can um, oppress you, and God won't do anything, depending on how you react to it. Can I get old me? <laughs> People can do that. Uh, I'll give you an example. On our way here, uh, I was driving in my pickup, and this big old pickup was behind me, and it had three sets of those really bright lights on it, and then another one kind of below it. Did you, ever, did you see it? Well, he was, he was behind me almost the whole way here. <clears throat> and he pulled up behind me, and, you know, he's not, he's not, he's almost right on my bumper, too. He's not, I, my heart, my car looked like, you know, I was fixing to go up in an alien thing, you know. <laughs> you know. Uh, I look, you know, I didn't put my hand up, but I look in the mirror, and clearly that light's so bright he could see I was looking at him. He didn't do anything. <clears throat> In fact, he just stayed right there. And um, so, you know, I was thinking of several maneuvers that I could do. <laughs> I was. I was. And then I said, you know, because of the way things are going now, the divisions in Republicans and Democrats, the division, there's so, it's really gotten bad. I don't know if you know. So a few of you look like you know. But I said in my mind, I said, 
people just don't care anymore. They've gotten to the place where I don't care. I'm not going to dim my lights for you. Even if you, we, we passed somebody and she clicked her lights and they wouldn't click them on. People just don't care anymore. And my, when I said that, I went, oh, okay, people just don't care. So I, I, you know, it was like, that's the way they are. You know, I mean, I could slam on my brakes or I could do some sort of, you know, something, you know, show them the state bird or something like that. <clears throat> uh, but, but I realized it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. As long as I can see and I can see, it doesn't matter. Then, then he got beside me and he's still in my side mirror. Then he got up next to me too. Well, what happened was he got beside me but just back so that would be hitting my side mirror. And he stayed there for a while. And I went, that's fine. But then he started speeding up to Deb's car. And I went, okay, we can't do this. So I sped up and was trying to block him from getting anywhere near you. I don't know if you noticed me doing that, but I was trying to keep him off of you. Shine on me, dude, I don't care, you know? <clears throat> but she has a hard time with glare and stuff like that. Um, you know, we have a million little things that happen in our day where we could be Hagar in a good way, you know? We could handle it in a right spirit. <clears throat> and, you know, I didn't, I didn't go, okay, you know, Lord, I, I know I handled this in a right spirit um, eventually. Right? I didn't admit it. Eventually. And was totally with the Lord. <clears throat> but I didn't go, okay, now, Lord. Um, when we get up to 35 and we go to the service road to get to the church, uh, he's going to be getting on the freeway, which he did, and have him flip that big old truck and just, no, no, I didn't think that. I didn't want that. Uh, that's, you know, that's going to happen to me. You know what I mean? Do unto others what you want to do unto you. Oh, I want to flip my truck and, you know, die in a thing where I'm all mangled and stuff and hung on a cross and... Everybody going, see, I told you. Whatever. <laughs> so there's, there's a huge thing to this. We, I, I keep talking about it, but we're trying to get there. But there's a huge uh, repercussion back to Sarah on this. <clears throat> um, uh, these many seeds are many individual Ishmaelites. But see, God's not... He's not blessing Ishmael like that, in that sense. Not now, not really. He's taking care of Hagar because of the spirit that she had. He's leaving Abraham and Sarah's camp, and he's coming to Hagar. He comes to Hagar, and the first one calls her by her name in the Bible. He promises her, you know... And we say, well, that's not really thinking this through, Lord, because of all the stuff that's going to be happening. You have foreknowledge. You need to check out the future. You know what? He's not checking all that stuff out. He's doing what's in him. Amen? He's just doing it. This is what's in him, and he's going to do it. And we can go, well, this is, you know, if I was God, you know, that's why you're not God, okay? Yeah, there's a reason you're not God. <laughs> uh, so these Ishmaelites that God just promised to Hagar are going to be the biggest problem Abraham's offspring will ever have. Okay, that's significant, except, except. The problem isn't really with Abraham's seed. It's with Sarah's. You say there's, they're the same ones. That's the way God works. You say they're the same ones. How will this get reversed? 
<laughs> you would not imagine. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Okay, I'm not sure down here. I, I think I've already said this, but Ishmael means what? God hears. And I said some time back, that we call him Ishmael. But God says, there's, there's me hearing his mother. <laughs> there's me hearing. I, you know, we say, well, he's cursed. And God says, you know, I brought him into being because of what I'm looking for in everybody. Certain spirit. All right. So, um, okay, again, the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child and shalt bear a son and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. There it is. There's the one I was looking for a while ago. Why is this happening? Why are all these seeds coming? Because it's, that's what he's saying right here. Uh, you're going to have a seed, and this seed is going to bring forth many seed because of Sarah afflicting you or oppressing you. There it is. You see it? This isn't for any other reason. This is for one reason God is standing up for Hagar. And most people would never believe that. That's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did, and that's exactly what he'll do. <clears throat> you know, uh, Hagar, if she had foreknowledge, she could look and go, oh, my God, all my seed's just going to be, you know. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's take um, Ishmael for an example. Mm -hmm. We'll get into him, but it says he shall be a wild man. Okay. Oh, my God, I'm bringing forth oh, a hairy wild man. You know? He's, got, he's just got hair all over his body except he's bald. I don't know why that came. That's not in the Bible. Don't go with that. <laughs> but she could, she could think that. But instead, she ought to be thinking not about that, but I am with you. You ask me to do this, I'll go through this. Will I suffer? Yes. Will it be hard? Yes. But will I be with you? Yes. Okay? All right. So, um, in verse 11, the Lord saw and heard her cries over unjust affliction, oppression. And suffering done by Sarah. God's messenger tells Hagar that she has conceived a son, not a girl. Because, you know, it could have gone that way, too. God could have said, I'm going to bless you with a beautiful girl. And that would have actually made it easier. A certain man had two sons. Well, a girl and a guy. No, two sons. The Lord named her child. See, I'm, I'm continuing to try to throw snowballs at you to make you wake up. The Lord named her child, and it wasn't wild, crazy guy. That belongs to somebody in this church. <laughs> who are y'all thinking? <clears throat> I know who you are because I said it based on that. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and so you see, we've read this story before, right? We've all read this story before. All of these things are jumping out that are going, whoa, 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 whoa. See, we need to just quit reading the Bible like it's a book and start just looking at it and trying to see what's going on. Lord, what's going on? And then all of a sudden you discover this stuff and you go, 
You came out to Sarah. You you uh, blessed blessed her. You 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 know gave her a son. Uh, you you spoke her name. You named her son. God did. So if you wonder why in the Quran the story of Abraham and Isaac are slightly different, it's because it's the same God. The God of Abraham was the God of that brought forth the seed called Ishmael. Abraham did. That's his seed. Right? Right? He had sex with Hagar and she got pregnant, okay? <laughs> Some of you are like, what does that mean? Really? Okay. Abraham, <laughs> you know, Abraham is, the, <laughs> is the progenitor of both and Abraham's God, though he's called Allah or Allah, is really and truly the same God, the same one. But then, as time went on, they changed the story. And if you read the Koran, you'll find out that it says that Ishmael was the one that God offered up. Nice try. <laughs> All right. So, so when, again, we say... Ah, Ishmael, or we say the name Ishmael, and God says, I hear, I hear. That's all he gets out of it, because he named him. I want you to know that I hear in your oppression when you respond with the right spirit. I hear, okay? God is the one who named him that. It is usually the father that names the child. You know, are, you, are you thinking, Randy, are you just going to keep hitting us with this stuff? <laughs> uh, it all is done in a uh, very ca caring and tender atmosphere, the naming. It's, the, a, it's a big deal, naming the child. Again, why is he doing all this? He was named this because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. But you have to add in and your response because there are millions of people across this planet that are oppressed and wrongfully thrown in jail or whatever that sit there and curse unjust actions. Well, it is unjust. It is wrong. We're talking about the cross. We're talking about Jesus unjustly being accused and murdered and, and uh, all the things that went on, slapping and, and, and beatings and all this stuff. It's unjust. It's wrong. It's da-da-da-da. But God wants that spirit in us when we go through it. Most Christians believe that God is on the move trying to get everybody out of that stuff. That's what his job is. Your job is to get us out of this. You know, this is wrong. This is bad. This is unjust. Move, Lord. And he's going, I would like to move in you. But no, you're not going to let me. You're going to just always want to escape. I want to escape. Who does that sound like? Israel coming out of Egypt instead of the firstborn. God didn't, the, the lamb didn't die for Israel who just wanted to be delivered. Y'all remember all that? He didn't die for them. He died for the firstborn. And he, and he said, you know, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to kill all the firstborn of Egypt. But he said, he said, I'm going to kill all the firstborn of Egypt, but you better put some blood on your doorpost or you'll be included in it. Right? When I see the blood, I will pass over, but get ready. I will pass over what? I will pass over the firstborn. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, that's the name of this class. <laughs> it's the firstborn. I've always wanted to do this. Anyway, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, so, so in Egypt and coming out of Egypt, we get that picture. We see it. We see it. It changes us. We, we see, as it were, two streams flowing out. Not that it happened physically. We see two streams, a river, a river of God, a river that is meant to, to, to go to the promised land and meant to spread, a river that has one small stream, and it's called the firstborn, and, and the other larger stream is called Israel. And Israel didn't change the they continue. You check it out. I, I dare you to follow it out all the way through. They constantly wanted deliverance. And the firstborn, at least they were supposed to have understood, because it was after the image of the firstborn, which we're supposed to be after the image of... Right? Where's that at in this New Testament? Romans 8. That we might be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many. All right, so there's a spirit going on here, and there's, a, there's an understanding, and maybe we don't understand it all. Maybe we don't have the mind of Christ. Maybe we're, maybe we're just a book learner. Maybe we're just a Christian. Maybe we're, you know, maybe we're all these things, and we, we don't have it. Why don't we go ahead? Go. It's like it's like it's like um, if there were two streams flowing out, and I was over here in the I just want to get deliverance from everything uh, thing, and I felt like God would. In fact, I I may not know. I don't know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over here and get in the line with the firstborn, because I want to know what's going on in his heart, because it's born. It's his. It's uh, out from God. It's this over here is just his hand doing something for me. This is the life flow of him. And so I'm, I'm risking, I'm risking stepping out from over here because I don't know and I've never been that way. And but I, I, the Lord speaks and I hear stuff and it really does touch me. And doggone it, I'm, I'm fixing to do it. And they're, they're probably going to stone me because I don't really belong over there. But you get over there, and if you want the son, what do you think the father's going to do? Stone you? No. Will he give you a stone? Will he give you a scorpion? <laughs> He'll give you the Holy Spirit. My God, my God. I mean, he is wholly given to revealing Christ in you. I mean, just embrace the Holy Spirit. You know, and I don't mean charismatically. I mean, to do what Jesus said he would do. All right. Um, again, why is he doing all this? He was named this because the Lord had heard thy affliction. He heard. For the Lord has given heed to your harsh treatment. Your affliction. God is that way for those who cry out to him in their affliction. He will hear. This is the way he is regardless of who and how bad the person is. Consider Manasseh. But <clears throat> where, where is that? Um, okay, so I'm trying to recall. Okay, I remember. No, the Holy Spirit brought it to my remembrance. <laughs> Guess he wants to, you know. Um, okay, so um, God is over here in the camp. Hagar is left. He didn't follow her along and talk to her. He's over here. And he goes, I hear her cry. So he goes, I'm going to go check it out. No, to see of what kind it is. Okay. Okay. God is over here. 
Lot is over here in Sodom and Gomorrah. <clears throat> Lot, we'll get into this too. I mean, it's along the way of this journey. So, so God comes passing by Abraham and, and uh, you know, then he says, okay, I'm on my way here to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And, uh, and he said um, something like this. It's very close. It would almost be like, and he didn't, Abraham didn't say this, but like Abraham would have said, now, where are you going and why? And the scriptures say it sort of like this, I'm going there, Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm going there to check out their cries. It does. To, to see of what kind they are, of what substance. That's something. That's two witnesses in one book. <laughs> you know? What if that was really the case? Everywhere. What if we go, well, the Lord, um, you know, exalts the humble and brings down the, those who exalt themselves. <clears throat> but our spirit is not right. We may be, see, we may be being oppressed, therefore humbled. We may be being oppressed, but God's going to come and check it out. And he's going to go, man, you don't qualify. This doesn't qualify. Just because you're oppressed doesn't qualify. There's so much oppression across this world that it's ridiculous. Horrible things. He does that with certain stipulations that are at work in him. He's not just looking to free the oppressed. If he was, he's, can I say it? If he was just looking to free the oppressed, he's doing a horrible job. You say, Randy, you're walking on thin ice there, buddy. God will strike you down. No, he won't. Not, not, no, he won't over this. Because there are, there are so many oppressed people. Folks, there's stuff going on in this town that you don't even know about. There are, there are people being held captive that didn't deserve it. There are women being raped. There are children being abused, whether it's physical or mental there's just, I mean, there are, you know, there's bad, bad beyond all that. There's bad stuff in this town and in every town. There is. We live and we go, oh, Denton's a nice little town. Okay, sure. I said, who did I, I told you that in Crumb. <laughs> I said, there's bad people in here. Because there are. We, we want to believe they're not. Have you, ever, have you ever watched any of those shows where, where it's like uh, somebody murdered somebody and it's a, it's a show and they've developed it? But they start and they tell you this happened on, you know, April 7th in uh, 2012. And I'm going, I, I, I was around then. <laughs> And then you see the next one. This happened. It's almost like I could get a calendar and start. Mar and they don't even show all of everything that's going down. You understand? And just start marking off and going, you know, every day of my life, horrible stuff's going on. Now you say, Randy, you're, you're really depressing me. I'm not trying to depress you. I'm trying to wake you up to just go... If God's primary goal was to just save the oppressed and bring down the bad, this world would be a very different place by now. It wouldn't take him 2,000 years to, to clean it up. He's looking for a certain way to react in these things. And we understand that to be his son, the lamb. We understand that. But God's trying to show us here. I mean, while this story actually happened, um, it's still a shadow. You say, well, what? 
Yeah, that's what, that's what Paul said in Galatians. He said Abraham had two sons, and they represent two covenants, and this is a, a what? A allegory. This is an allegory. You're going, Abraham's just an allegory? <laughs> because you know? uh, we're wanting something more out of it. He's talking about his son. He's always talking about his son. I'm sorry, he's, he's focused. We're not. We're not. Okay. Um, <clears throat> God is that way for those who cry out to him in their affliction. He will hear. Okay. When news that Sarah would in the future give birth to a son named Isaac, God only tells it to Abraham, Genesis 18. I keep blowing your mind with Hagar, don't I? <laughs> he doesn't go to her and go, hey, I will bless you and you're going to bring forth. No, he did that to Abraham, but he didn't do it to Sarah, but he did do it to Hagar. Got to be careful who you judge and who you don't. Uh, well, let me read that again because I have a typo here. When news that Sarah in the future would give birth to a son named Isaac, God only tells it to Abraham, but Sarah only overhears it. <laughs> I don't even like the way that sounds. It sounds to me like she was listening on that conversation. She didn't really belong there. I mean, not didn't belong, you know, go in and rattle some pans and act like you're washing dishes or something. But, you know, don't be going, well, this is between him and God. I call him Lord. And God's going, I'm not going to tell her. I know she's listening. And he says that to her. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm telling you, these stories have some real stuff in them, but we're just, we're, we're on somebody's side here, so we see everything in light of that. You get over here and you go, you're not on Hagar's side, you're just looking through God's eyes and you're going, dude, you are really going overboard with this Hagar thing compared to Sarah or compared to, you know? I mean, she's... Isn't she the one that brings forth the seed? Yes. But she's not the seed. Okay. Um, in other words, the Lord did not tell Sarah directly. However, God did tell it directly to Hagar. Where are we at here? Um, Oh, I think I will stop because I always go a little further than I should. And then Kelly has to beat you harder and faster than she wants to. Well, I felt like we made some real progress here because we only did uh, one verse, <laughs> two verses. But how full are they? How full and how shocking and how, you know, here's the deal. Maybe, you know, uh, okay, I'm, I'm imagining a guy who works with electricity. Robert, you work with electricity. So I'm imagining a guy like that, but not Robert. And, and he, he's working with him, and goes, ah, ah, you know? And then, you know, two weeks from then, he's working with him, ah, man, you know? And he just does, does it all the time. After a while, he goes, well, I kind of like it. I like being shocked, you know? Um, you say, what is your point? 
I think you're, you could get to a place where you like being shocked by what I share. Wouldn't it be better if God shocked you? <laughs> Wouldn't it? And that you just go, you just reading all the time. You go, wow, 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 wow. And you're going, you know, why does Randy get to have all the fun? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, no, I'll close with this. Right. Um, when I was in Bible school, there was a man, most of you know him, there was a man who was one of my teachers, and he, I mean, he really did know the Lord, and he really shared the Lord, and, and I remember sitting there as a 22-year-old, I guess, 23, 21-year-old, I don't know. I remember sitting there listening, class after class, day after day, week after week, and he just poured forth the living Christ. The emphasis was perfect. The, you know, everything about it in that sense was the Lord. I knew it was the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. I'm getting the Lord. And I remember coming to a point where I said, I just got jealous. And I told the Lord, I said, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. You know, I want to get the Lord that way. I want him. I want him that way. I, I, you know, and I'm not going to give up, you know, because we can go, well, you're just an early 20s dude. And uh, he was, he's still not that much older than me. You know? <laughs> and, um, uh, and he's been seasoned in this all the way through Berean or whatever. You know, and I went, I don't care. I want you. I want you like this. I really want you. I want to know you. I want to breathe you. I want to, when I read the scriptures, I want it to, I want, maybe God answered some of those prayers. Because I said stuff like when I read the scriptures, I want it to jump out of the page on me and be what is really there instead of what I see in it. And every time after that, when I would hear him preach, I'd go, Lord, there it is. I, I want that. <laughs> you know? And, you know, I mean, there was some more humility to it than that. But there was, there was that. I mean, there was that. It's like, look, I'm not going to be happy until I get, get that relationship where I can read the word and just, it just be the living word. Not the living Bible, the living word. Come on. Somebody pray that real quick for everybody. Father, we just thank you for your heart for us. But Lord, this is your heart. You, you desire to open your word to us, to open your, your life and your heart to us. Lord, we, we want that. us and our, our, our mouths will say one thing and then our lives will say another. Lord, we, we just say don't pay attention to those other yeah. things. Lord, hear our words right now. Lord. Amen. Hear our words. We want you. We want, yeah. we want your word in this way. Yes. We want your life in this way. In the way that you desire to give it. In the way that you desire to share it. Yes. Lord, not in our not in our feeble ideas, Lord, but the, the, the truth of it, the reality of it, the, Lord, the life of it. We just thank you for that, Lord. And we just, oh, Lord, just hear us as we, as we repeat this to you, Lord, as we bring this up again and again, Lord, and ask you the same thing, Lord, that we want you in this way. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayers, Lord. Hear our prayers. Okay, we got a little time for a break, and then Kelly's going to bring the lash. <laughs>